chance and probability. Now we shall learn a new concept under the chapter name data handling. Sometimes it happens that during a rainy season you carry a raincoat every day and it does not rain for many days. However, by chance, one day you forget to take the raincoat and it rains heavily on that day and that's your bad luck. Sometimes it so happens that a student prepares 4 chapters out of 5 very well for a test but a major question is asked from the chapter that she left unprepared. Everyone knows that a particular train runs in time but the day you reach well in time it is late. So these events are those events on which we do not have any control. You face a lot of situations such as these where you take a chance and it does not go the way you want it to. Can you give some more examples? These are examples where the chances of a certain thing happening or not happening are not equal. The chances of the train being in time or being late are not the same. When you buy a ticket which is waitlisted, you take a chance. You hope that it might get confirmed by the time you travel. So after reading these statements, we are talking about those events in our life on which we sometimes have to take chance. We however consider here certain experiments whose results have an equal chance of occurring. Therefore, mathematics is a field which do not leave any part of our life behind. Mathematics gave an ability to calculate predictions or chances as well, which we shall study in depth in the following sections. Getting a result. You might have seen that before a cricket match starts, captains of the two teams go out to toss a coin to decide which team will bat first. What are the possible results you get when a coin is tossed? Of course, head or tails. Again, here we do not know whether head will come or tail will come. Again, we take a chance, but we know very well that either of two conditions will come true. Imagine that you are the captain of one team and your friend is the captain of the other team. You toss a coin and ask your friend to take the call. Can you control the result of the toss? Well, no. That's not in our hands. Can you get a hat if you want one? Not exactly. Or a tail if you want that? Again, not exactly. It's not in our hands. We just take a chance and whatever the outcome is, we simply follow that. No, that is not possible. That is what we discussed. Such an experiment is called a random experiment. So what is a random experiment? An experiment on which we do not have any control. Yet we know the possibilities of outcomes. Again, head or tail are the two outcomes which we know that they will certainly come, but we do not know. Rather, we do not have any control on its occurrence. So that is called a random experiment. Try these. If you try to start a scooter, what are the outcomes? Either it will start on the first kick or it will not start on the first kick. As we had head and tail, therefore in case of scooter, starting and non-starting are two outcomes while starting a scooter. Number second, when a die is thrown, what are the six possible outcomes? Well, you know very well a die through which you play Ludo and various other games consists of six faces, each marked the values from one to six. So therefore, in one throw, there are total of six possible outcomes. That is, we are sure that any one out of six possible outcomes will show up on the upper face. Third, when you spin the wheel shown, this is the wheel. It has three sectors, namely A, B and C, and this pointer will be pointed whenever this wheel stops and on which this pointer falls that will be the outcome. So what are the possible outcomes in this case? So we have either A, either B or C as the three possible outcomes in this case. So what does outcome mean? We are talking about outcome so many times. Outcomes here means the sector at which pointer stops. So outcome can take any instance based upon our event. In this case, it was A, B or C. In case of head and tails, outcomes were head and tail. In case of dice, outcomes were from 1 to 6. Fourth one, you have a bag with 5 identical balls. So this is the bag. We have 5 identical balls that is of different colors and you are to pull out a ball without looking at it. That is, you simply put your hand inside it and you get one ball. Now, what are the outcomes? 
So the outcomes are namely white, red, blue, green, yellow. So when we will pull one out of this bag without looking at it, we can get any one out of these five balls. So the listing goes like this W R B G Y. That is our fourth. Think, discuss and write. Does the first player have a greater chance of getting a six while throwing a die? Well, no, it doesn't matter that which player throws a die. So the answer should be false. Would the player who played after him have a lesser chance of getting a six? Again, false. All players have equal chance of getting a six. Suppose the second player got a six. Does it mean that the third player would not have a chance of getting a six? Again, same thing is repeated. Well, false. We just said all the three players have equal chance of getting a six. So that is what we are talking about now. Equally likely outcomes. So whatever we have discussed so far about heads, tail, faces of a die and getting a six on a die, they all are equally likely outcomes. That is none of them is less likely to come. Everybody have equal chance of occurrence. A coin is tossed several times and the number of times we get head or tail is noted. Let us look at the result sheet when we keep on increasing the tosses. So a random experiment happened. Random means the experiment on which we have no control. So someone tossed coin 50 times. They performed tally marks for heads that is for each head they put this tally mark. For each tail they put this tally mark. So they tossed the coin 50 times and 27 times head came and 23 times tail came. Now, they performed the same random experiment 60 times. This time number of heads were 28 and number of tails were 32. So they keep on increasing the number of random experiments. They did it 100 times and then they watched that number of heads came 48 and number of tails came 52. So if we observe over here, as we increase the number of trials or number of random experiments, the value of the sub events that is head and tail in case of tossing a coin is almost similar. So after this random experiment, this lesson wants to tell us that all sub events, all are equally likely outcomes. Observe that as you increase the number of tosses more and more, the number of heads and the number of tails come closer and closer to each other. That is what we discussed. This could also be done with a die when tossed a large number of times, number of each of six outcomes become almost equal to each other. This simply means as you perform the random experiment more number of times than all the sub events, chances of occurring becomes equal. In such cases, we may say that the different outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. So this is the main crux of this discussion. This means that each of the outcomes has the same chance of occurring. Now here is a cartoon, coin is saying I could fall like this or get lost. So coin is predicting that I can land like this that is not on the face but on the sideways but this doesn't happen actually. And dice also says I could land like this against this wall to fail the random experiment of humans. Okay then they both say don't you worry such cases will not be considered as possibility is very small. Also if sometimes it does happen that you are tossing over a mud and coin falls like this, that random experiment will not be considered as an experiment itself. Similarly, if dice falls against the wall like this again, then the experiment should be done again. Therefore, all the sub events have equal chance of occurrence. Linking chances to probability. Consider the experiment of tossing a coin once. Remember, we are just tossing once. What are the outcomes? You know very well from previous discussion, either heads will come or tails will come. There are only two outcomes, head or tail. Both the outcomes are equally likely. That is what we discussed in previous section. Likelihood of getting a tail is one out of two outcomes. Therefore, we are going to mathematically denote probability or chances as a fraction. So one chance out of total two chances. In case of experimenting a coin, that is, we toss a coin. In other words, we say that the probability of getting a head equals to 1 over 2. In mathematics, we usually write it as capital P and in bracket, we write the event name. In this case, we are tossing, tossing 
a coin that is equal to number of desired outcome let's talk about head so head can happen only one ways therefore one out of total number of events possible so either heads or tails so we have two events so this is the way to represent probability in mathematics now it says what is the probability of getting a tail again it will be the same that is half because we have only one instance of happening a tail out of total two possibilities now take the example of throwing a die marked from 1 to 6 on its faces if you throw it once what are the outcomes well any one out of these values could appear on the top face the same is said over here the outcomes are 1 to 6 thus there are six equally likely outcomes now it asks what is the probability of getting outcome as 2 so we have number of outcomes giving 2 as only one therefore one possible outcome out of what we have total six possibilities therefore one over six the same has been represented over here one is number of outcomes giving two two can only be given in this form whenever the upper face will have two like this on a die but we have total six such faces consisting various numbers on it therefore what is the probability of getting number 5 again 5 can happen in only one way so it will be again one out of total possible outcomes is 6 now what is the probability of getting 7 again the same 7 can happen in one ways only out of total 6 ways what is the probability of getting a number 1 through 6 again it will be 1 to 6 because we have distinct or unique numbers each time and we are only throwing once outcomes as events each outcome of an experiment or a collection of outcomes is called as an event so what is an event that is the different instances we are talking it could be one instance or multiple instances the same shall be termed as event we will understand it in more depth in the following statements for example the experiment of tossing a coin getting head is an event and getting a tail is also an event that is sub instances of a bigger event of tossing a coin will be termed as event so if you get head that will be an event and it will also be termed as outcome again if you get tail that will be an event as well so whatever your outcome is that will be termed as an event in case of throwing a die we have total 6 events that is if we get 4 that will be an event or the outcome same thing is getting an even number an event well again yes whatever the outcome is it will be termed as an event since an even number could be 2 4 6 in case of dice we have these three even numbers so getting an even number is also an event what will be the probability of getting an even number so total even numbers we have three as shown over here the number of outcomes that make the event of even number is 3 out of total number of outcomes of the experiment is 6 so the same thing is repeated again and again this is the basic definition of probability let's consider example 3 a bag has four red balls and two yellow balls the balls are identical in all respects other than color a ball is drawn from a bag without looking into the bag what is the probability of getting red ball is it more or less than getting a yellow ball well let's try to find mathematically and then compare whether this statement is true or false so there are in total how many balls four red and two yellow when you add them up it gives you six outcomes of the event now we need to find probability of red ball as well as probability of yellow ball so how many red balls are total we have four red balls so what will be the probability of drawing red ball the total instances of red balls is 4 that is events or the possible outcomes are 4 so we write 4 in the numerator because these are all possibilities because we have four red balls out of how many balls total is six balls now we simplify this fraction it comes out to be 2 over 3 simple divided with 2 is it same as that of getting yellow ball well we need to find first of all probability of yellow ball drawing now how many yellow balls do we have 
we have two yellow balls that is two less than red balls so in numerator this time two will come because we are finding probability of yellow balls out of what out of total six balls when you simplify it is one over three simple it says why because we are simplifying it with two so two ones are two two threes are six now if we compare both these fractions clearly probability of red ball drawing is more therefore we can say the probability of getting a red ball is more than getting a yellow ball although all the outcomes have equal chance of occurring but when we compare probability then we can surely say since red balls are more in this bag therefore probability of getting red ball is more and we can express mathematically when we will subtract both these fractions try these suppose you spin the wheel so we will spin this wheel list the number of outcomes of getting green sector and not getting green sector on this wheel so how many greens we have one two three four five so we have five outcomes for green sector we are just listing it it is not asking to find the probability again listing of not getting green sector is obviously red so one two three we have three reds so it will be three for reds in total we have five plus three eight one two three four again four eight second find the probability of getting a green sector how many greens we have five so we can write five out of what total we have eight we cannot further simplify it so we have solved first and second part find the probability of not getting green sector that is for red sector it is three over eight again since this wheel consists of more sectors of green color therefore probability of green sector is greater as compared to probability of red sector this is what we learned so far chance and probability related to real life we talked about the chance that it rains just on the day when we do not carry a raincoat what could you say about the chance in terms of probability could it be one in 10 days during a rainy season this statement simply mean that if we consider that once in a 10 day it will rain therefore we can denote in terms of probability like one out of how many days out of 10 days if we know this that it rains once in 10 days the probability that it will not rain will be equal to the number of days it will not rain will be 9 out of how many total days 10 days simple again it says assuming raining or not raining on a day are equally likely well it will be equally likely because we do not have any control over it therefore the events on which we do not have any control or are random experiments we term it as equally likely to happen the use of probability is made in various cases in real life so let's discuss different aspects of our real life where use of probability happens number first to find characteristics of a large group by using a small part of the group that is also termed as exit poll so various news channel perform this exit poll what happens in this during elections this involves asking the people whom they have voted for when they come out after voting at the centers which are chosen off hand and distributed over a whole area for an instance if we are talking about a big city and we have say about 100 polling stations within this city where these polls are happening so a news reporter will go to say selected five polling stations so over here 1 2 3 4 5 out of these total 100 polling stations based upon that they will ask people about their favorite candidates and using that they will assume that who is going to win so when they come out after voting at the centers which are chosen off hand and distributed over the whole area that is what we explained here distributed over the area that is they take randomly the places of interest this gives an idea of chance of winning of each candidate and predictions are made based on it accordingly second field is meteorological department predicts weather by observing trends from the data over many years in the past so you see various apps like google weather we have these days which provides us the probability of the weather today we simply ask google how is the weather like today and it shows the chances of raining snowfall etc and we get prepared with our umbrella for the day 
So these are all real life situations where probability is used. With this concept, we shall try to solve exercise 5.3 in next tutorial.